This week on Maker Update, a Star Trek themed alarm clock, oblique strategies, an animated GIF display, a Viewmaster, a NeoPixel corset, and a blood glucose display. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Adafruit edition of Maker Update. My big news to share is that I will no longer be doing Maker Update on the Make Magazine YouTube channel. Instead, you're going to keep seeing me once a month here on the Adafruit channel and then starting next week, I'm going to be moving Maker Update over to the DigiKey YouTube channel. So a big change for me, but one that I'm really excited about. Now let's get started with the Adafruit project of the month. Check out this Star Trek themed alarm clock by Davis Stells and the Ruiz brothers. It's so freaking cute. Like a lot of Adafruit projects over the past month, it's using the new Pi Portal all-in-one internet display. To make it a practical alarm clock, they've added a small speaker, an arcade button snooze that can take some abuse, a barrel jack for plug-in power, and a rechargeable battery and power boost board as a backup power supply. The 3D printed enclosure fits together with little machine screws and provides a nice big snooze bar up front. On the back, you have a full-size USB port that you can use to charge up your phone. There's also access to the micro USB port on the power boost, which you can use to power the clock instead of using the barrel jack if that's more convenient. The last little bonus feature here is the ability to trigger another IoT device from the touchscreen. By default, there's a coffee cup icon for triggering a Mugsy open source coffee maker, but you can change the code to make your IoT lights turn on, open your blinds, or something else. A little bit of Adafruit news to share, PyCon is coming up in Cleveland May 1st through the 9th. Attendees will be getting a free Circuit Playground Express board, and now they're also getting a chance to explore how to use the board by participating in a series of informal drop-in workshops throughout the weekend. You can learn more using the link in the description. And now for more Adafruit projects, rapid fire, Dana Wall posted this simple but awesome guide on making this motorized cardboard hand that drums its fingers. For the electronics, it's basically a Circuit Playground Express in a continuous rotation servo, but you can also make it portable with a battery pack. The rest of it is just cardboard, hot glue, and a wooden skewer. From low tech to highbrow, Colin Cunningham shows us how to turn a Pi Portal into a touch controlled oblique strategies deck. These are prompts written by Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt in 1975, meant to help unblock your creativity. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of Pi Portal projects this month. Lady Ada herself made a guide on how to load up a Pi Portal with an animated GIF. John Park shows how to use one as a weekly countdown clock or a single event countdown clock or a count up clock to mark a special occasion. John also has a project using a Pi Portal to display local air quality or the number of astronauts currently in space, which is one of my favorites, or the number of views and subscribers on a YouTube channel. Taking advantage of the JST connections on the back of the Pi Portal, Katni Rimbor shows how to use one as a color picker for two strips of NeoPixels, you can assign different colors to each one or sync them together to control both at once. And for something totally unexpected, the Ruiz brothers show how they turned a Pi Portal into a retro Viewmaster style portable photo viewer. You can load images directly to the board or use an SD card. The code is fairly straightforward. Really, it's the mechanical design that I love about this project. And of course, the googly eyes. Aaron St. Blaine has a guide on making this corset that uses NeoPixel side light strip to create a psychedelic future retro mashup. A Circuit Playground Express is used as the main control board hidden behind that corsage in the middle. And finally, an inspiring project from the Adafruit community, check out this blood glucose display by Scott Hanselman. The project uses a Pi Portal board to communicate with Night Scout, an open source software that, in Scott's case, takes data from a continuous blood glucose monitor to help him manage his type 1 diabetes. On Scott's blog, you can find out how he turned the Pi Portal into a glanceable display to keep an eye on his blood sugar. Now for a few tips and tools to share. This week we found out that the TI-83 Premium CE Calculator can be used to interact with boards running CircuitPython. By way of TI Planet News, you can see how some calculator hackers have been able to connect to boards with a USB OTG cable and interact with them directly. It's impressive. The Ruiz brothers have both a case design and a wall mount design for the Pi Portal. Both are 3D printed and the case design is especially cool because it's meant to be used as a portable system for taking the board on the go. The wall mount is cool too though and allows you to pop the board onto any existing light switch plate or power outlet. 
And over on the Cool Tools channel, I've got an interview that I did with maker Sophie Wong. We talked specifically about how she uses the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express board for prototyping projects, including her recent space helmet design. And to close things out here, I'd like to highlight an Adafruit product that's doing a lot of heavy lifting behind the scenes. The Power Boost 1000 is a power management board that makes it easy to take your projects portable. With it, you can run your project off of USB or a wire connection or a 3.7 volt rechargeable battery pack. Not only will it step up the battery voltage to 5.2 volts, but it will also recharge your battery when it's plugged into USB. This is the board used on the alarm clock, the Viewmaster, and the Pi Portal case, but it's also great for Raspberry Pi and Arduino projects. Go check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. And remember that next week's Maker Update will not be going out on the Make Magazine YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to the DigiKey YouTube channel down in the description, but really the best way to keep up with the show is to sign up for the Maker Update email list. I'll leave a link for that down here too, all right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.